Okay, so there's a method behind the madness here. Just believe me, I have a plan, I really think this is going to work out. Today we had ourselves the end-of-season press conference for the Vancouver Canucks GM Patrick Alvin and head coach Rick Tockett. You see, the video of the entire release is like an hour long, I think, on YouTube. Yeah, it's 54 minutes, so it's a pretty long one. And it's an hour of them talking about things, answering questions, going over the team, etc., etc., and... You know, for me to try to go out there and summarize a full one-hour conversation would be quite devastating of a task. And so what we're going to do is go over onto social media and use some of the more, let's just say, responsive tweets to steer our conversation and talk about some things that have been talked about in this presser. To help us out and to filter everything out properly, we're going over onto the Canucks subreddit and we are going to sort by new. The reason we're doing this is because... The last hour's worth of posts on the Canucks sub are all quotes from this interview. And these are the quotes that have garnered the most traction, and as a result, these are probably the most talked about things regarding the Canucks and the presser. So we're going to be reading each of these comments, these tweets made by journalists reporting on what was said in the presser, and just kind of going over what these ideas entail. What does this mean for the Canucks and what we can expect going forward? So, in chronological order, the first tweet made that was posted onto the Canucks sub is what Patrick Alvin says about Elias Pettersson. He says that Petey carried the team this season. He also notes that he's been talking with Pettersson and is very optimistic about the prospect of getting an extension done this summer. This was reported by Thomas Drance, and it should come as no surprise that Elias Pettersson is a primary asset the Vancouver Canucks want to keep on their roster for next season. We all know how good he was, 100 points, etc, etc. There actually was an interview done with PD's agent earlier today on Donnie and Dolly 2, that in which we're not really going to talk about here. We can talk about that in a later video, but there's a lot more to go over when it comes to the Canucks. Farhan Lalji then has a quote from Alvin on bringing in Rick Tockett and not prioritizing the draft position. At the point that we made the changes on those core guys, things were heading the wrong way. Now, I'm honestly not too sure what he means by this. Now, when it comes to prioritizing draft position, the best way to have possibly done that would probably to have been play PD, play Hughes, fewer minutes than they had been playing because they played a lot, especially towards the end of the year. Thatcher Demko got himself an extended look after returning from injury, so that also contributed to the Canucks' success towards the end of the year. But when it comes to making the changes on the core guys and things being headed the wrong way, I'm not actually too sure what Alvin means by that. Sure, when Rick Tockett was brought in, the team started winning, but there also was a pretty good amount of character building for a lot of the core players on the Canucks too, once Tockett did come in. It was only Hughes and Petey that didn't really need the Tockett bump, as everybody else, JT Miller, he improved significantly. Under Tockett, you had yourselves other players that started to produce a little bit more, players like Kuzmenko got some tough love in there, so it was interesting to say the least how Tockett handled his final ending parts of the season. On the subject of coaching changes, though, this is a tweet made by Bruff. Why did it take so long to make a coaching change? Alvin says, I felt like Bruce earned his way to coach the team. And, you know, I don't know how I feel about that, honestly. Like, considering how rumors about Bruce's potential departure were already stirring up around this time last year after the guys had been hired, there were already rumors saying that they didn't want Bruce as their coach. Just seeing how the season started out, seeing how Bruce was thrown under the bus for such a long amount of time, I felt like they really left Bruce to dry, and especially when there was no indication that there was an interim coach involved or whatever, they wanted to get the primary spending opportunity to make sure they didn't have to pay any extra guys. It kind of felt inappropriate that Bruce was on for as long as he was as the Vancouver Canucks head coach, especially like that last press conference that he had. Dude, you saw the guy was tearing up. You saw it was really emotional. Everybody knew he was going to get the can the next day, pretty much. And so the fact that Alvin is saying, oh, he earned his way to coach the team. Where? Are you saying that the resume that he had built up to coach this team way beyond his expiration date was the bump from last year when he was hired before Alvin and Rutherford were even brought on? Like, 
What is that? How does that even go down? How do you say that? Bruce Boudreau was handled so poorly by the Vancouver Canucks management towards the end that it kind of feels like a slap in the face to hear, oh, he earned his way to coach as long as he did with the Canucks because the way that he ended up leaving, not good. Otherwise, there are some other quotes that I thought were interesting to bring up here too. This is what Thomas Dran said, Patrick Alvin's preference is to not use buyouts this summer. I don't want to use buyouts if we don't have to. I don't want to use buyouts if it's going to affect us down the line when we could be a contending team. My intention is to not use buyouts. Now, obviously, everybody's referring to Oliver ekman Larson when they say buyout, and Patrick Alvin actually said that he feels like OEL can be a good defenseman still if he's able to get the right mindset, I think the quote was. That's a really interesting way to talk about it, but long story short, it appears that the Canucks are not going to be able to buy out OEL, or they're not going to choose to do so. They're going to try to continue with this player, hope that he actually improves, but I don't know. Based off the resume we've seen the past few years, I don't really know if that's an idea worth buying. You also had yourselves a quote made by Patrick Alvin on Brock Besser on how he needs to change his off-season preparation. Now, this quote isn't in line with all the other ones in terms of the chronological order on Reddit, but this is what Alvin said. Give him credit the last two months. I thought he played his best hockey since I've been here. He should be able to take the next step if he's willing to sacrifice this summer. Now, those are some harsh words, but... Whatever he's referring to, I'm not going to go out there and try to guess. When it comes to Brock, we had known that he's always gone through some stuff in the offseason. He has had injuries to deal with. He had his father last offseason as well. And so when it comes to what Alvin is saying, sacrifice, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what that means. Obviously, Brock has never really been the guy to come off with the best starts in NHL seasons. So maybe there's some sort of an offseason conditioning sort of thing that Alvin is referring to here. Who really knows? But... I guess we'll see our results yield itself by the time September, October rolls around. Here's the next quote that I wanted to talk about. Patrick Alvin says there's going to be some changes in regards to creating cap flexibility this summer. Okay, great. There also was a conversation to have about goaltending. This is what Alvin says about Artur Silovs. Yeah, the young guy in the AHL. I have no problem putting a young guy in the NHL and challenging Thatcher Demko for games, says Alvin on his philosophy of developing Artur Silovs. And that in and of itself is pretty good. Silovs looked pretty good the entire time he was here, and I definitely do think there's a good sort of foundation there for NHL success in the long term should he continue down this path. Whether or not that's appropriate, though, bringing him up to the NHL, I guess we'll see if he does get those games and how he's able to perform then. Farhan Lalji says this, when asked about the captaincy, the first player Rick Tockett talked about was Quinn Hughes. Lots of praise there. He also mentioned Pedersen and Miller wouldn't commit to having someone wear the C next year or if he has a timeline. And when it comes to that, I definitely do think that Hughes is the leading candidate, quote-unquote, to get that captaincy for the Canucks next up in line, but whether or not that's next season, the season after that, who really knows? It doesn't really matter, I feel. It's fine. They can just kind of roll with what they have so far. They don't need a captain right away. There also is a conversation about these three. Miller, Petey, and Hughes are spearheading the effort to get the Canucks back in town early to prepare for next season, says head coach Rick Tockett. And that's great to see. Seeing these Canucks coming back to the city a little bit earlier, a little bit sooner, so they could get their conditioning a little strengthened up more, that's a good sign, especially out of the three top guys on the team. Patrick Alvin says this when it comes to JT Miller and trade talks, I always listen. Gretzky got traded too. I'm not saying I'm not going to trade him. And of course, Miller said that he thinks he's not going to get traded, but uh, we'll see what happens as the draft comes and goes. You also had yourselves Patrick Alvin saying this, none of Team Russia's players will be flying back to Russia this summer. For what it's worth, Andre Kuzmenko was very careful in answering a question about his summer plans on Saturday. So according to that, it's apparent that Kuzmenko, Kravtsov, Mikheyev, and Pud Colson, they may not be flying back to Russia, so that's really interesting to see how that's going to go down. Alvin also says he doesn't anticipate spending much money on veteran depth in net, so no Ryan Millers or Braden Holtbys or any other guys coming in here, Yarra Halaks even, just kind of going with what you got, which is fine. There also is a final note made on Phil DiGiuseppe. Alvin says they're not sending him down because they're afraid of losing him on waivers, and that's fine. 
I mean, he was a top six forward at the end of the year, so I can understand them not wanting to make that risk. But either way, those are all the comments that I found that I thought were interesting to talk about in regards to the Alvian and Taka press conference. Obviously, the thing was an hour long, and this is only a 10-minute video, so there's a lot more that they had talked about, and there's a video link in the description if you want to go ahead and watch the entire thing. But for now, let me know in the comments all your opinions about what we had talked about in this particular video. I hope you enjoyed this video. And... Bye.